I see public health as a blend of social sciences and medicine. And often in the practice of public health, I think we lean a little bit more towards medicine and not enough towards the social sciences. So this has been an incredibly, incredibly rich environment for me to think about uh, my recent work responding to the pandemic and to get input from a whole wealth of social scientists. In my regular life, in my regular job, very fast paced, very operational, sometimes a bit transactional. We have things that we need to get done. We have decisions that we need to make. There's a lot of management involved. There's uh, politics involved. And there's really not much time um, for reflection and contemplation um, and reading and any deep thinking about anything. Um, and it actually took me a little while to transition from my, the way I've been thinking and operating for the last 25 years working at the county to just having the whole day before me that was all mine, that I could do anything I wanted. Um, uh, it was strangely hard. I, I had to reach and find a different kind of discipline uh, to, be, to be productive. Um, but it's not a bad problem to have. <laughs> I'd be delighted to have the problem again. When I have a question, there's always someone who can help me think it through. And just as an example, I was talking to one of the historians, um, Rachel St. John, and I um, really been struggling with a lot of questions about democracy and about the actions that I took using my health officer authority during the pandemic. And Rachel said, oh, you would really enjoy meeting Dan Rogers. He's an emeritus historian uh, from Princeton uh, who was here at Stanford this year. Let me introduce you. So I just sent uh, Dan a note and um, asked him up for lunch and he came. We had a wonderful discussion, a really wonderful discussion. Um, and he followed up with a whole reading list for me. That's not something I could have done anywhere else, I don't, I don't think. I think sometimes people do their best thinking when they feel well. And to be in an environment where you feel um, so nourished, uh, I think is really important. And I think probably brings out people's best work and supports the intellectual environment. So the fact that we uh, can take a walk in the hills at any time and, and gaze out to a beautiful landscape and sit in quiet, peaceful uh, studies and eat fabulous food, that in addition to having really rich conversations over coffee, tea, sitting in the patio or lunch, that all just sort of contributes to this overall sense of well-being and restoration that I think feeds a very rich intellectual um, discourse and intellectual life. That's the health perspective. What I tell people is that I feel as good as I did when I was eight years old. And I don't know about you, but being eight years old was a pretty great time. You know, when, you, <laughs> when you're like, you're, you're totally able and you're also completely free. And that's a little bit of the feeling that I have at CASBIS. Um, and when I, you know, I wake up in the morning and I think, I get to ride my bike to CASBIS. It's spectacular. I mean, it is so spectacular. It's so, um, it's so deeply restorative. You don't get those chances in life very often. And I never want to leave. So, there, yeah. <laughs>